Should we check on him? Is he good? I don't think he's good. What he's, is he looking at? Uh, just, he searched the word travel. Just the word travel. Ugh, that's not good. Donnie. What's up, guys? What's up? We're just checking in. You okay? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm used to gallivanting all over the planet. But now with COVID, I can't go anywhere. Mm. I'm stuck here. Yeah, we hate seeing you act like such a little pussy boy. There's no reason to be such a big fat pussy. There's plenty to see right here in America. I've already seen most of America. No, mm. you've seen the coasts. Yeah, we'll show you the Midwest, the heartland. Mm -hmm. Would that even be fun? Donnie, fuck no. no. No, but it'll be real. What does that mean? I was sold. We were off to rediscover America. The real America. And more importantly, rediscover what it even means to be American. Do we look like explorers? I look like fucking Mozart. We said goodbye to the shimmering glass towers of the liberal elite. And began our journey deep into America's backyard. Alright, just to get this out of the way, you're probably wondering why we're in costume. Well, we're rediscovering America, and we were going to be pilgrims. We were about to buy the pilgrim costumes. Turns out, pilgrims canceled. Canceled. No more pilgrims. So we said, okay, let's be early Americans, colonials. They had one colonial costume that fit me like a glove. So I ended up with that. KB, you fit perfectly in a costume called the Napoleon. Uh, the extra large size. No, it was no. It was not. It was not extra large. What was this costume it, called? This. Well, this is this is just colonial. No. Kyle settled for a classical pianist costume, and I went with the swashbuckler, which I thought looks kind of colonial. But now that it's on me, I fucking look like Christopher Columbus. Almost exactly. Who is a thousand times more cancelable than the Pilgrims? He was the R. Kelly of the 15th century. He was. Let's not talk about Christopher Columbus again. He was a rapist right. and a thief. Columbus is the new C word from yeah. now on. We'll treat it yeah, as we'll such. We'll drop it. Just don't Do, yes. Yeah. Please, I would appreciate it. We're here at our first stop, Columbus, Ohio, to the Arlington Cemetery of Feed Grain. The phallic garden of fructose. What if John Deere had a dream? Fever dream. Jesus Christ, Kyle. Unlike its sister attractions, Stonehenge and the Easter Island Heads, which asked the question, how were these built? Cornhenge asks the question, why was this built? Costing the taxpayers hundreds of dollars. Was it worth it? What do you think about this? I don't know. A resounding yes. And do you guys know why? Because America was built on corn. Without it, we wouldn't have ethanol. We wouldn't have Fritos. We wouldn't have Fritos honey barbecue twists. Doritos 3D. Orville Redenbacher. All right, you know chips. Yeah, dude. Uh, Willie Mays. Oh, that's enough. Tony Kornheiser. Many people say Cornhenge is boring. And a waste of money. And while they are 100% factually correct, it is a fitting tribute to one of the pillars America is built on. Dude, my hemorrhoids are like chewed up gushers. But America wasn't just built on corn. It's also a nation under God. So to take a closer look at America's religious foundation, we visited the country's premier Bible-themed wax museum, where the only thing they care more about than Jesus is pronunciation. Would you call these tapestries? Uh, I would call them tapestries. Tapestries, yeah. 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 You said it wrong. Let's jump into some wax. Then Pilate took Jesus and scorched him with a leaded whip. Thirty-nine strokes. Gruesome. Uh, things got real there. <laughs> Father, into thy hands! Now who does the voice acting? The narrator is his name Tim Dean. He's actually an electrician. I commend my spirit. Not only is Bible Walk the only Bible-themed wax museum in America, it's also the only sustainable one, often using refurbished wax statues of celebrities. 
we're not into movie stars or anything, but we just use what we can use and disguise them as best as we can. I haven't noticed yeah, they are one. Fun. You're standing in front of one right yeah. now. We were learning tons about the Bible. The Bible says he was a, a Harry. And the curator was even able to learn something from Kyle, who had attended Catholic schools all his life. Adam and Eve. Right. Verse 2. Cain bonks Abel in the head. Abel dies. Who came next? Well, the, I'm not going to pretend like I know that. I probably have to go back and look into this. Many see. don't. Yes. Okay. A gentleman named Seth was the third child of Adam and Eve. We went on one tour, and another tour, and another tour, and another tour. And, another tour. and we were having so much fun that our seven hours there only felt like six. Stay here and watch with me. But unfortunately, we had to continue on our journey. Well, the Bible Wax Museum, I guess, was slightly less exciting than it sounded. You think a Bible Wax Museum sounds exciting? It was called Bible Walk. What about that was exciting to you? I'm sorry, it's one nation under God. I thought we should get some religion into this trip, but don't be so down. I got something really exciting for us to do. You yeah. guys up for some paintball? Yeah, yes! yes. This is what's inside it. Oh, okay. Baseball. Yeah, you start out just like that. How'd you get the idea? Well, this is my second one. Mm -hmm. The first one was when I was in high school. Uh, a baseball accidentally got into some paint, so I wrapped a wire around it, and I just started dipping it and painting it. And I kept records of it, and I put a thousand layers on it. Well, I still got it, and it's over there. <laughs> 11 years later, when he turned three, mm -hmm. I wanted something different to do, so that's what I, that was what I done. Wow. And now we get people from all over the world, somebody from that country up there has been here. Dick Wolfsey came too? Yeah, you know who Dick Wolfsey is? Yeah. 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 I didn't have a fucking clue who Dick Wolfsey was. All I know is that he didn't get to paint the 27,100th layer of the paintball. That honor belonged to us. KB's first trip at bar, so we got to do a bunch of cocaine. Donnie gets to go do drugs and watch rugby. Here's my first trip. You guys are now the world's largest ball of paint painters. You hold the record until tomorrow. It's not the yep. size of the paintball, it's the... It's the heart of the painter. Yep. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I'm gonna cut you a piece off up here. Look at that. Whoa. Piece of world record. Right on. That looks cool. I almost want to eat this. I, it looks it delicious. Really does look. Could we eat this? Yeah, but I wouldn't. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Tastes, Tastes like, like pain. <laughs> Tastes like I pain. was going to say America. You're wrong. It's pain. The aftertaste is also very painty. Um, Swallow it, The green tastes like lettuce and stuff. And then... Yeah, I guess <clears throat> mainly paint. You're gonna have to start making I ate the world's largest <laughs> paint shirts. Thanks for stopping by. Well, that was uh, something. We just, we just need to get to the hotel because I honestly think I'm gonna throw up. Did you, you actually ate that paint? You guys both did. No, no way! I lodged it in my cheek. It's I right spit here. that paint right out. You're gonna get right chronic right lead right poisoning. I'm. I feel awful. Nick's dumbass pumped himself full of lead, but now it was our turn to pump other things full of lead. Which, thanks to the Second Amendment, is every American's God-given right. So we visited a stranger from the internet who said he had an arsenal of guns in his basement we could fuck around with. You guys want to come over, pick them up, fill, you know, whatever feels good in your hand. You go you first, you pick out one. the fist. I'll take that, this one. I'd actually pick this one for you. For me? Back. After a quick safety tutorial, Fire! and Kyle finally managing to fit plugs into his cauliflower ears, <sighs> yeah, fits. we were ready to hit the range in place of pistol blackjack. Did I hit anything? 
I don't think he hit the wood. <laughs> Missed the wood. You know what? I'm the only so, one wearing shades here. Right there. Boom. Right where Damn. I am. <laughs> Even the king. The king. Kyle, like, is Napoleon. Very short, but great with guns. Let's crack some cold ones. Yeah. Hell yeah, Kyle. Look at Kyle. Kyle has like <laughs> pulled out a strawberry. Holy fuck. <laughs> yes! Ooh, got it. Got it. So you got 11 or 1? I'm going to take 11. <laughs> Live round. For the win. Call your shot. King of Hearts. King of Hearts. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, gun much, Donald? <laughs> <laughs> Game. That's stupid dick. Blackjack. You know, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, I don't know how old the country is, America had to take down a king to become free. And I just had to take down a king to assert myself as the alpha of this group. Shut up. Oh, as, as, as I'm sure you can see, it's been very tough. Oh, please. <laughs> After easily vanquishing those soy boys in blackjack, it was time to break out the big guns. I can't close my left eye. My God. Stop it, Colin. Damn back! Wait, you never been around guns before? And what do I do? Give Just it a nice little flicker up. It's all on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No need to worry about the trigger. There it is. Yeah. I got that pumpkin square in the head. And explosives. Did you get it? <laughs> what are they laughing at? I don't know. What in the fuck? Oh! Whoa! Yahtzee! Whoa! Did anyone order pumpkin pie for dessert? <laughs> That's a pretty cool line, KB, right? That was perfect oh, for I the deleted that. scenes video that we're gonna put out. <laughs> Wait, I think I just ate explosives. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> America. I'm the white. Ooh. <laughs> in the red, white, and blue. <laughs> Woo! God damn, Nick. Nice! God damn, Nick! But just as we were realizing we might be gun guys, I received some concerning news. <laughs> Nick, fucking two. shooting guns! Put it on safety, put Shit. it on safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got a text from my mom. You know how people tried to kidnap the governor of... Michigan? Yeah. Oh, that, that yeah. smoking hot broad? She was hot. Yeah, that was, that was is. attempted by an armed anti-government militia group okay. that are known for wearing tricorn hats. What's, What's a, a tri- what? Admittedly, the optics weren't great. So we went to a local watering hole to blow off steam the only other way we know how. By drinking motherfucking beers. Dude, you are freaking me out about the mask, man. You gonna rob me. The locals couldn't have been more welcoming and excited to have three boys from the big city in their neck of the woods. You guys know the BLM and yeah. Antifa? We're not them. That's We're not, not quite them. them. The bar had pork. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> See, this is why I prefer cock. And poultry. But unfortunately, it also had beef. I'll do you it. both yeah. invited to chop the Can we the rooster? I'll kill you. Now I will. No, 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 hey, no. Sam. I yeah. really will. Man. <laughs> this one, my thumbs. Tell right who the guy is. Yeah. Yeah. Can we yeah. beat the pig? <laughs> and after that guy showed me his knife without me even asking, we figured it was best to hit the road. Speaking of roads, the U.S. has 170,000 miles of highway. They are the arteries that connect our vast and beautiful country. And no city knows that better than Indianapolis. The crossroads of America. Indianapolis is built around cars. The Pacers, the Indy 500, Lucas Oil. It's in their blood. We celebrated the city's rich automobile history by going to the number one tourist attraction in the entire state. Constant thrills, the best live action that the Midwest has to offer, and heart-thumping, jaw-dropping, edge-of-your-seat entertainment. Fuck yes! yes! Welcome to Idle Park, a venue specifically designed to watch... Traffic. Oh shit! Oh shit! Fuck yes! yes!
This fucking sucks. But America doesn't just have the largest road network. It's filled with big things. From big people to very big people. But no other town in America is more passionate about being the biggest than Casey, Illinois. The mecca of larger than life objects. From pitchforks to barber poles, wooden clogs to bird cages. When it comes to the size of inanimate objects, everything is number one in Casey. Well, almost. Behind me, you'll see the world's largest mailbox. Let's go check in on the mails in the box. Thanks, Donnie. I'm posted up here with KB, and I gotta say, it feels like we're in the mailbox. Kyle? Yeah, um, pretty much any other room except we're pretending to be mail. Nick? You sure you're used to that? Thanks, Kyle. Back to you, Donnie. Those guys really give a new definition to mail fraud. The world's largest yardstick. At first glance, you might think, this is fucking stupid. And that's because it is. A yardstick is a yard. That's like saying an iPod Classic is the world's largest iPod Nano. It's just a big stick. It's not the world's largest stick. It's just a stick. We're joined with this motherfucker. Uh, Donnie. Donnie, you're... you're... Your rip is just gut. Dick in bo You are gonna oh. get a felony. Flip your flip your pants uh, backwards. Oh yeah, because I have a long jacket. Yeah, flip them backwards. That's, that's yeah. a good idea, yeah. We sat down with the big brains behind the big things in a small town project to learn more about what impact these large objects have had on tourism. So it was a small uptick, but uh, when you have basically zero traffic in a, in a small town, any small uptick makes a, makes a pretty good uh, uh, noise. So. Uh, uh, that's what kind of started us to think about maybe building some others. Do you mind if I put, please? No. My eyes can be off put it. Um, are you the world's largest guy? Like, are, are you like known for being the world's largest guy? No, no I, w I wouldn't say. Are that. you known around for being the guy who does this? Um, probably the locals know. I, yeah. don't, I don't wave my banner too much. So, no, you know. humble your work yeah I mean that is, is damn big yeah. the rocket chair you can tell it's the world's largest yeah. what if I were to tell you that we had one of the world's largest things with us right now and wanted to see if you'd be willing to add it to your repertoire of world's largest things yeah I'd consider that yeah I'll set it up for a minute and you guys can ask him a couple more questions All right. yeah. we're gonna rapid fire we're gonna name some things and you say if it's bigger the better. If it's if it's large, it's better. Something so like something that you would like to see. The world's largest. Um, grandfather clock. That would be cool. That would, that, would be cool. that would be cool. Um, world's largest prostate. Never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, that, could, that could be bad. World's largest crouton. Nice. Pretty big, huh? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you. Sure fly off the shelf. you this do. is a normal size crouton. Oh For reference. Way bigger. You this is the world's largest. Oh, wow. Jim was incredibly grateful for the crouton. Surely you guys uh, didn't come all the way from New York. You got other places you're going to. We, we this, was, this was the pinnacle. Yeah, do you want to keep this? and overjoyed to add it to his town's collection of big things. However, he may have been expecting something slightly larger. You have a new home now, Crouton. Keep calm and Crouton. We even got interviewed by a local reporter. So, to the collection. Crouton. Who did a full page article on us for the Casey paper. For some reason, the story didn't include a photo of the Crouton. But due to a fortunate crop, it looked like I had brought another world's largest. While we had discovered fame, we were still undecided on whether we had rediscovered America. So to find out once and for all what this country is all about, we visited an American icon 
who's famous for being undecided. Would you care for a mint before we start? We have an icebreaker or a regular mint? Uh, I will decide third party. I do uh, not want a, uh, a, a icebreaker or a mint. I have a, a crouton in my pocket. If you Is that you know, solid third party? That's kind of like the socialist party of you know, yes. pre-discussion. That is what they say. So the goal of our journey was to sort of rediscover America, and we haven't really come to any solid conclusions yet. In your opinion, what does it mean to be American? Uh, Being American means being free to do and say whatever you want as long as you don't infringe on the rights of anybody else. Uh, It also means having to deal with the consequences of doing and saying the things you like to do. So if you like to do and say things that are hateful and make other people feel bad, then you're free to get shit on all over the place. Speaking of uh, saying hateful things, there was like a, uh, a fly on Mike Pence's head. People started saying some disrespectful things about you. Tommy Smoke said the fly is better than Ken Bone. Hey, Ken Bone, that fly is more famous than you. LMAO, Ken Bone must be sick that he got upstaged by a fly. That fly is a much more deserving American icon than Ken Bone. And last but not least, that goddamn fly is the Ken Bone of 2020 and I want to eat a bullet. How do comments like that make you feel? I wonder if those people will still be giving the fly a rent-free headspace four years from now. And if the fly will still have 170,000 followers and have people asking for interviews in the fly's house. And uh, if the fly will still be alive because it's a fucking fly. That's true. It is a fucking fly. Like, if you're tough enough to say that from behind your keyboard, come on out. What if I told you that that very same fly is here today? Uh, I would gladly shoot it with my uh, salt-shooting, insect-killing gun. Kyle? Mr. Bone? He's in here. He might already be dead. Um, Oh. Where, where'd it go? Yeah, it's out. I thought I think he was we dead. just released a real fly into my house. It is right there. It's not, it's not moving. Waste it. Awesome. Ken. Right. Unleash. Oh, oh shit. Dead. That's what I'm talking about. He is dead. That's what we think of the fly in this house. Amen. Yes. Amen, Amen, brother. Thank you. I kind of assumed that thing had so that died on the drive. The debate to rest. Yeah. Fly's dead. Harambe's dead. Who's left? Damn Daniel. Um, Salt Bay. Yeah, sure. Why not? Distracted boyfriend. With the fly out of the picture, the conversation shifted back to what the true essence of America is. And Ken Bone did not disappoint. Uh, America is a collective of peoples and ideas and ideologies and viewpoints. So whatever you view as your real America, that's what it is. Uh, America loves to say, like, we're number one and we're the greatest. I think America is the greatest in that it has the greatest potential for good, but it doesn't always have the greatest outcome. I mean, we've got really bad education and criminal justice. Not really. We've got more people locked up than even a lot of tyrannical dictatorships for minor offenses. Uh, We have lots of really bad outcomes right now, but I think we also have the greatest potential for change. You're looking at a place where 15 years ago, more than 70% of the population said that gay marriage was immoral and we should get a constitutional amendment that outlawed it forever. Now we have 70% plus that say, oh man, that was stupid, we were wrong. In, in, In not just one generation, but since I graduated high school, We've got that. So that's a huge potential for change, a potential for people to learn and grow that it's hard to match. It sounded like you were running a campaign even. Yeah, vote for me. (laughs) There it is. For some reason. I appreciate this. I know it was very last minute. I'm happy to be here in my own house. On the way home, I reflected on these past three days and realized that while we had made some great friends along the way, and seen some interesting places, it hadn't been the greatest trip. But it definitely had the potential to be. And according to Ken Bone, there's nothing more American than that. So hey, 
Maybe we had rediscovered America after all. What in the fuck? What are you talking about? Do you actually believe that? I'm just trying to wrap the video up. That trip had no potential. Never. None from the first day. Then why did we even go? It was your guy's idea. It's kind of a bit, I guess. Yeah, funny. I mean, th that cost the company thousands of dollars. Our costumes alone were pricey as shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ripped yours. <laughs> yeah, he did. What the fuck? Life feels so good, so good now that you're here. Life feels so good, so good.